Hello, I'm Dr. Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation, Pain, and Fatigue Laboratory, and I'm right in the middle of writing a proposal to develop a new treatment for fibromyalgia and long COVID and myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, and Gulf War illness, and I thought I would tell you a little bit about it. So for background, you may have heard of low-dose naltrexone. It's effective for fibromyalgia. It may be useful for long COVID and MECFS and GWI. There isn't as much information available for those conditions. But anyway, it works by reducing inflammation in the brain. And it does that in a way that's similar to anti-inflammatories you may take for inflammation in your body, but it has this really uncommon ability to pass through the blood-brain barrier. And when it crosses into the brain, it can block a receptor called toll-like receptor 4, and that sits on microglia in the brain. And when it blocks that receptor on microglia, it can reduce chronic fatigue and pain and cognitive issues that might be caused by uh, brain inflammation. Now, the thing with lodisinal trexone is it doesn't work for everyone, and so I'm always looking for ways to improve the treatment. And one new approach that I'm looking into is using the drug nalmaphene instead of naltrexone. So instead of low-dose naltrexone, it would be low-dose nalmaphene. And nalmaphene has a chemical structure that's very similar to naltrexone. The effects in the body are very similar, but there are at least four distinct advantages to nalmaphene over naltrexone, and they have to do with improved half-life and improved bioavailability, improved tolerability. But the one that's most important to today's discussion is that it appears to be several times more effective at blocking toll-like receptor 4 than naltrexone is. And so nalmaphene may be better at reducing central inflammation in treating these chronic conditions that I'm always talking about. And there's some limited evidence that it very quickly and significantly reduces brain inflammation in animal models. It hasn't been tested. The, the brain scans haven't been conducted in humans yet. Um, this is an example I'm going to show you right here of nalmaphene that's reversing brain inflammation that's caused by ethanol in rats. By the way, even a single dose of alcohol activates microglia and causes, at least transiently, causes brain inflammation. Um, that's a separate story. It's just this is an example of how nalmaphene can very quickly reverse that inflammation. So anyway, I want to see how well this medication, nalmaphene, works in humans with chronic pain and fatigue and cognitive issues. And specifically, I want to know, does it work better than lotus naltrexone? Now, in the U.S., nalmaphene is not FDA approved for oral use. So there's some extra steps that I have to go through, including FDA investigational new drug approvals. Also, we don't know what the optimal dose of nalmaphene is, so I have to do testing to determine that. And one way I can do this is by gradually titrating the dose or increasing the dose every 30 days and closely observing the response. And another way I can do it is randomize different dose levels without telling the participant and then observing the response. And there's pros and cons to both approaches. Then I'll take all that data and I'll use something called the clinical utility index that finds the best dose taking into account both efficacy and tolerability. What's the most, what's the dose that's most effective at reducing the symptoms, but it doesn't cause unwanted side effects. So if the nalmaphene significantly reduces the symptoms and an optimal dose can be identified, we can proceed with running a proper large clinical trial, nalmaphene versus placebo, double blind, and probably head to head low-dose nalmaphene versus low-dose naltrexone. That would be interesting to do as well. So I'm going to finish this proposal. Uh, hopefully it gets funded and we can run this pilot dose finding work and get the preliminary efficacy information that we can then use to get a larger uh, clinical trial study funded. There's nothing for you to do right now with nalmaphene. I just want to keep you up to date on the various projects I'm working on. I'll let you know if and when the study begins. 
Uh, I may do this study remotely, so you don't have to be close to my institution, but I haven't made a final decision on that design attribute yet. I'll, I'll let you know uh, if I end up doing it local or remote. In the meantime, uh, I cannot recommend that anyone try nalmaphene for chronic diseases. We have no scientific data that it works for fibromyalgia and ME-CFS and related conditions, and we don't have any information on the proper dose. Uh, in the United States, there's no way you can obtain this medication in oral form right now anyway. And even if you're in a country where you can get oral nalmaphene, the commercial dosage, which is about well, which is 18 milligrams, is probably going to be too high because 18 milligrams nalmaphene can completely block your endogenous opioid system, and there's a good chance that's going to cause some malaise or dysphoria, which would defeat the whole purpose of taking the drug anyway. So it's probably going to require a lower dose than what you can typically get uh, in oral form. So anyway, this is one of the many clinical trials that I hope to be running soon. Uh, keep an eye on this channel to stay up to date on all of them. I'm going to get back to finishing this research proposal, and I will be back with another video soon. So thanks.